Hi to everyone. Just wanted to say that we're really thinking of the year 11s at the moment. I know as you do your, your exams and your assessments and everything, uh, we're very much thinking of you and praying for you. Um, well, we're here with this mighty and amazing journey to the promised land, one of the most extraordinary stories told in the Bible. And the Bible gives a lot of time to this story. It's very central to the Bible. And at the end of the next bit of this story, which we're going to tell today, I've got three more questions for you. So if you listen really carefully, carefully, you might be able to, to uh, answer the questions. So we know that the children of Israel were slaves in Egypt and that their lives were terribly difficult and they were crying out to God for a saviour. And he gave them Moses, who was 80 years old, and he spoke to Moses at the back of the desert through that burning bush. And he said, I know the people's sufferings. I know their sorrow and their sadness and their difficulties and their pain. And I have heard their cry, God said. And then he says, I have come down. Moses, I am coming down among them. I'm coming to rescue the people. And then we know that plague after plague came to Egypt, disaster after disaster, and God was calling out to Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh wouldn't let them go. And then finally on that last night before they leave Egypt, those families sacrifice that Passover lamb and the fathers go out and they paint that blood uh, above the doorposts and the families then gather in and they and they have that Passover meal and the next morning in Egypt this great cry goes up uh, because the firstborn sons have died and Pharaoh says to Moses go get out from here um, I want you to take the people away and the people gather up their things and among their things are this fantastic treasure that they've been given the gold the silver uh, the 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 jewelry and the different things that they've been given um, and they gather it up and they head out from Egypt and Moses is at the front of the crowd um, and God is in front of Moses and this wasn't just some small tribal movement this was a vast gathering of people hundreds of thousands of people with their children and their animals um, journeying out from Egypt and they travel for two weeks and then they arrive at the Red Sea and now they're thinking Moses how are we going to get across this Red Sea there's no way across and to make things worse they realize that the Egyptian army are behind them chasing after them they can hear them far away in the distance coming and sometimes I think we we're in a situation where things are quite bad and then and suddenly the situation gets a whole lot worse. Well, that's what happened to them. And they turn on Moses. They, they did this all the time. They were, they were good at looking for someone to blame. And they say, Moses, this is your fault. Look what you've done. You've led us here. What are we going to do now? And then two extraordinary things happen. First, that pillar of cloud moves behind them. It's been in front of them. It moves behind them. And it confuses the Egyptians and creates darkness in that Egyptian army. And they can't get through to find their way to the children of Israel. And then that second, the second thing happens, which is Moses lifts up his rod, his staff over the sea. Wouldn't you have loved to have seen this? The Bible says that that night as he lifted that rod, that God came down and the Red Sea ran from the presence of the Lord and a way opened up through the sea. Absolutely extraordinary. And in the morning, the people saw there was a pathway through. And Moses says, go, move. And they begin to go through that huge number of people travel through on dry ground. And behind them come the Egyptian army. And then the water comes down on top of those Egyptians. And those, those enemies are killed. And God was magnified in the sight of Israel on that day. They turn their eyes towards him in astonishment and wonder. They say how great you are how great you are we do not know Lord how great you are they begin to dance and to sing who is like you O Lord among the gods who is like you you are glorious in holiness fearful in praises you you alone do wonders who is like you Lord Wow, what a day for them. They must have thought we are on our way to the promised land. But it wasn't all going to be easy. They journeyed on. There's a bit of a map here which shows some of their journeying. 
They journeyed on for three days into that wilderness. It was a real desert, but God was with them. He was leading them. He was that um, cloud during the day. He was a pillar of fire during the night. But by day three, the Israelites realized they've got a problem. They've got some food left, but their water is running out. Moses, they say, what are we going to do? We cannot survive out here without water. And then the shout goes up, water, water. We found water. The people had found a lake, the people at the front of the crowd. And the people run towards it and they, they go down and they begin to scoop up the water and they begin to taste it. And then they spit it out. They realize it's poisonous, dangerous water. That place was called Mara. It means bitter. It was bitter waters. Sometimes things in our lives can be bitter. And they begin to cry out. They begin to cry out to Moses in complaint. And they say, we're all going to die out here, Moses. Our animals, our wives, our children, they're going to die without water. Everything's gone wrong, they say to him. Remember, they got a pretty big problem. We might think, well, my problem's pretty big, but their problem was desperate. They were going to die within hours, certainly within days, if they couldn't find water. They'd got a really big problem. But still the Bible says that in the day of trial, in the day of difficulty and trouble, don't harden your heart. Don't turn away from God. Instead, turn towards him. Well, those people turned away at that, that point. All of our troubles are like a test. This was a test for them and they failed that test. Often we can fail that test. We can cry out when, it's, when there's trouble and difficulties. We can just cry out in complaint and in moaning instead of going to our rooms and shutting the door and calling out to God and praying to him to help us and making our requests known to him. But Moses wasn't like the people. He didn't complain. Do you know, he prayed and he cried out to God. There were hundreds of thousands of people standing by that water. But as far as we know, only one man prayed on that day. And we need to make sure in our own lives that we're the one who is praying. In all our troubles, I'm convinced of this, we have a choice. We can turn away from God and sink down, down, down into our complaints. Or we can turn towards him and begin to pray. And that's what Moses did. He cries out, oh God, you've got to help us. We need you to help us, Lord. And the Bible says God showed him a tree. This is very strange. He showed him a tree and he threw the tree into the waters. And then the bitter waters were made sweet. And the people were able to drink. And the water was wonderful. And the water was good. No explanation is given for this. God must have supernaturally changed that water. And so the people drank and they filled up their water bottles and they know that God has helped them again. The bitter waters have been made sweet. God is able to make the bitter things in our lives turn to sweetness. And I know this not just because of this story, because of all because of what it says in the Bible, but because I've seen him do it over and over again. The difficult things have turned sweet when we've cried out to the Lord and asked him for help. And sometimes those answers have come quickly and sometimes they've taken a long time and sometimes they've taken a long, long time. But the answers have come. I know that he can make the bitter waters sweet. I just want to encourage you today where things are bitter, uh, can you turn towards him in your heart and cry out to him? Um, and he will turn these things into sweetness in the end. Let's just pray. Oh God, we thank you that you're the God who makes a pathway through the sea. You're the God who makes a way where there is no way. And you're the God who takes the bitter, difficult things in our lives um, and makes them sweet. Would you help us to be like Moses, to cry out to you, not like the people blaming and complaining, but like Moses, calling out to you, Jesus, for the answers. Amen. Okay, now we've got our quick quiz questions. First question, how many days did the children of Israel travel for before they ran out of water? That's the first one. Number two, they arrived at the waters of Mara. What does this word Mara mean? 
question three. What choice do we have when things go wrong? We can do one thing or the other. What are the two things? Okay, and now I'm going to give you the answers because I realized last week we never even gave you the answers. So the answers are, number one, how many days? It was three days before they ran out of water. Number two, the word Mara means bitter or bitterness. And number three, what choice do we have when things are difficult? We can either complain and moan and groan or we can pray and cry out to God. I hope you got them all right.